So I'm going to talk to you today about how the MRCGP SCA is marked. For each case, the examiners are looking at three domains, data gathering and diagnosis, clinical management and complexity, and relating to others. Now you're going to get graded from clear pass to clear fail for each of these three. And they're graded independently. So someone, for example, could get a clear pass for data gathering and diagnosis because they took a perfect history, they got the diagnosis correct, but then their management was completely incorrect and unsafe, they get a clear fail for that. Okay, they're marked separately. But of course, there can be a linkage. What do I mean by that? Well, in a lot of cases, if you get the data gathering and diagnosis wrong, because you missed something really important in the history, or you didn't ask about an important red flag, and therefore got the diagnosis wrong, in a lot of cases, that's going to lead you to getting the wrong management. So your management is going to end up being a fail as well, or a clear fail. Okay, and relating to others about your interpersonal and communication skills, about how you interact, about being person-centered, about thinking about the social and psychological aspects and the broader well-being of the patient. So in terms of the grades, you can get a clear pass, which means that it was basically everything was done really, really well to a very high standard. There's nothing missing for that domain. A pass means that what you demonstrated was satisfactory for a fully qualified GP to practice independently and safely. A fail means that you were below the standard of a fully qualified GP. And a clear fail means that you were significantly below the standard of a fully qualified GP or for data gathering or for management that it was significantly unsafe. So a clear pass is worth three marks, a pass, two marks, a fail, one mark, and a clear fail, zero marks. So the maximum raw score for any given case, if you were to get clear pass, clear pass, clear pass, is nine. However, the management domain in every case is weighted 50% extra. So what the examiners do is they mark based on what they see, of clear pass, pass, fail, clear fail for each of the three domains. The computer turns those into first a raw score, but then the management will be multiplied by 1.5. So i.e. if you get a clear pass, those three marks becomes four and a half marks. If you get a pass, those two marks become three marks. If you get a fail, that one mark becomes one and a half marks. If you get a clear fail, you still have zero marks, right? What that means is, Doing well in the management and complexity domain has a bigger impact on your overall score compared to the other two domains. Together, data gathering and diagnosis and clinical management and complexity, once you add the weighting, make up more than 70% of the marks. So more than 70% of the marks relate to things that are clinical. Less than 30% of the marks are relating to your interpersonal skills, being person-centered, uh, social, psychological, uh, sort of relating to others, that domain. So that's an overview of how each case is marked. And then what happens is the computer adds up all your scores from all 12 cases to give you a total mark. If that total mark is at the pass mark or higher, you pass the SCA overall. If it's lower, you fail the SCA. It's not possible to have a marginal fail. You either pass or fail. You can't have a clear pass either for overall. You know, you could do really badly in one case, you do really well in some of the others, you can balance that. All that matters is your total score by the end of the day. All right, so I hope that's helpful. If you want practice resources to help you, you know, prepare for your SCA, we have 69 detailed cases. Each one has a script for the role player in your group. Each one has a doctor sheet in the same format as the exam. And most importantly, there's a detailed mark scheme specific to each case what are the specific things that the examiner might be looking for in data gathering and diagnosis, i.e. key things to ask in the history, key red flags that you absolutely mustn't miss, what is the right diagnosis, what are the key things in clinical management and complexity based on current guidelines, and then what are the key things to think about in terms of interpersonal skills and relating to others. Okay? Um, there's also links for further reading and discussion so that you can do your learning as you go. I'll pop the link for that down below. Remember, consulting well is a skill, all right? And so, like any skill, you need to have a good knowledge base, you need to have good basics, but after that, practice is what helps you to improve any skill. Prepare and you will succeed.